Well, good afternoon to all of you. We are all here as a part of the three-day workshop under the Karnataka Wales Universities Partnership Program. This partnership program was initiated by the government of Karnataka, uh, where they offered the universities in Karnataka to have a partnership with any of the five universities in the uh, Wales state. Uh, wherein we submitted our expression of interest and uh, Cardiff Metropolitan University accepted our interest and we have a joint collaborative project that is about to come. As a part of that partnership program, uh, we are here today uh, with this workshop. Two experts, two distinguished personalities from Cardiff Metropolitan University, Professor Chaminda Hiwagi and uh, Professor Angesh Anupam are here uh, with us on behalf of all of you and on behalf of Mangalore University from the Department of Electronics. I wholeheartedly welcome uh, Professor Chaminda and Professor uh, Anupam. <laughs> welcome to you. This program is basically targeting the usage of AI, artificial intelligence in various fields. As you all know, our group in the Department of Electronics and one group in the Department of Computer Science are working on AI and image processing techniques. So AI in healthcare is one aspect which has been uh, happening in our university, in our department. Now AI, the use of AI or the misuse of AI is one of the concepts that has been uh, a, a say a thought provoking thing which is going on therein we have to use responsibly the AI technology rather than misusing it. So in that direction uh, Professor Chaminda has coined a very good name called as reached which means responsible AI cluster for higher education in India and Wales. So with this reached uh, initiative this agreement between the two universities for five years, uh, starting from this day, today in the morning we had a MOU signing where our Vice Chancellor has signed an MOU with the representatives of uh, Cardiff Metropolitan University. To say a few lines about the two personalities who are here with us, Dr. Chaminda Hiwake is the Associate Dean Research at Cardiff School of Technologies, Cardiff Metropolitan University, UK. He is a professor in data security at Cardiff Metropolitan University and his research interests are cyber security, data protection and data visualization. He was the founding program director for computer security and founding director of cyber security and information network center. He received his BSc engineering, first class honors in electrical and information engineering from faculty of engineering, University of Ruhana, uh, Sri Lanka in 2004 and a PhD in Multimedia Communications from University of Surrey in 2009. After graduation, he joined the Sri Lanka Telecom Private Limited as a telecom engineer. In September 2005, he was awarded the Overseas Research Fellowship by the Higher Education Funding Council of England Universities to pursue his PhD at University of Surrey. In 2014, he received a postgraduate certification in higher education teaching and learning from Kingston University. He's a fellow of Higher Education Academy, UK, and now he is a professor of uh, data security at CMU, Cardiff Metropolitan University. Welcome you, sir, on behalf of the department and welcome to Mangalore. <laughs> Dr. Angesh Anupam is a data scientist based at Cardiff, United Kingdom. He is employed at Cardiff Metropolitan University as the head of the department of data science. Dr. Anupam is also leading the net zero and sustainability themed research within the School of Technologies. His areas of research interest include complex system modeling using machine learning techniques and machine learning applications in sustainable healthcare environment, food and infrastructure. On behalf of Manglosti, I welcome you Dr. Rangesh. Happy to know that his, uh, his roots belong to India. His, his family is somewhere from Bihar. Is that what is what you are telling in the morning? Uh, Dr. Chaminda is also from a nearby country, Sri Lanka, and uh, both are here representing CMU uh, 
in the MOU along with Mangalore University. Welcome to both of them. In the next five sessions, starting from today, two hour interactive workshops. It's not just a lecture that you are going to hear. It will be interactive workshop where they will give you some activity. You may have to use laptops. You may have to use card sheets and then interact with them and learn how things are going to happen. So the first one will be based on flip learning, flip learning practices in higher education. And that is how they will start off the sessions today. Uh, welcome you once again and over to you to start your sessions. Thank you. And I also welcome all the faculty members from uh, neighboring colleges. Uh, Dr. Chandana is here, Dr. Prahash is here from the Department of Computer Science, research scholars from the Department of Computer Science, Electronics, and all my faculty members from the Department of Electronics and my dear students, welcome to all of you. And I hope you'll have fruitful three days uh, in the coming three days. You'll have a lot of learning, a lot of practical sessions where you learn how AI is impacting the world and the environment around. Thank you. So this, go, this won't be a lecture, so it will be a more interactive workshop. I want you to get together as a group. I think students, if you feel free to mix with the staff members as well. So we'll see, and we are here to, uh, this is not for one uh, unidirectional, one directional communication, but we want to hear from you as well, what things you are doing better. So we, we would like to learn from you as well. And what works for students, and we are happy to pass that message to the, when we meet our students uh, back in Cardiff Met as well. So this is our project, uh, you already know. And we are in the first stage of this funding, so which is funded by the Welsh government for us to come here and uh, have discussions and collaborations with you. In the second stage, I think it will be funded by the uh, Karnataka state, so where you, you will get an opportunity to uh, come to Cardiff Metropolitan and uh, uh, extend this uh, partnership and uh, collaboration as well. So these are the things. Uh, that we are planning to do while our stay uh, during this week, mainly to share best practices, yeah? create communities of best practice in learning and teaching. So not in research, in first two days we are working on uh, three learning and uh, teaching workshops. One is flip learning, which we are covering today. I'm sure you are doing it, so I will go through, uh, take you through the, uh, the details. And tomorrow, we'll, in the morning, we'll do problem-based and research-informed teaching. I know most of the, the lecturers are research active, so how we can bring our research practice into teaching as well, how we can make students uh, uh, interested in the subject. And in the, uh, tomorrow afternoon, we'll cover uh, uh, AI usage in learning and teaching. Not AI in research, but how we can use artificial intelligence, machine learning for uh, learning and teaching as well. And uh, Wednesday onwards, Wednesday and Thursday, we are more interested in uh, discussing research, how this partnership would work, how this research collaboration can take forward, 
how we can go for joint publications, joint funding. Of course, you can access funding pots in UK, uh, Europe, as well as how we can do uh, jointly apply for funding uh, bits in India as well. So last two days we are focusing on research, but first two days we are focusing more on the learning and teaching. Yeah. Yep, so I'll start with a small activity, icebreaker. Uh, I want you to group into at least two tables together, and uh, I'll pick one because we have a, uh, around 50, is it, Professor Khan? Yeah, so uh, because we don't have time to go by one by one, so I want you to tell three f interesting facts about you. Yeah, one should be a lie, and others trying to guess it. Would it work? Yeah. Uh, I'll start. <laughs> uh, I love playing volleyball, my first fact. Yeah. I'm a busy dad with three kids, second fact. Third one, in IPL 2024, I support RCB. Guess which one is wrong, a uh, lie. First one. Yeah, I'll take the uh, uh, guesses first and then I'll tell you. Anyone else? Third one? Second one? Uh, that, uh, yeah. Anyone for the third one? Third one, yeah. Uh, it's the third one because uh, RCB removed Vanidu uh, Hasaranga, so I no longer support. <laughs> RCV, RCV, yeah, so the first two are correct. So I love volleyball, I play volleyball, and uh, also I'm a busy dad of three kids. So, so have, a, have a think about it, and I'll ask one from each group, so I want you to get together, if possible, yeah, all maybe three uh, deaths together, and I'll ask from one of you, yeah, and uh, then you have to be ready to tell about uh, two truths and one lie. Testing. 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 Okay. Yeah, I'll go to the far corner one. Uh, any volunteers? Others have to guess, not in the group, no. Uh, 
Okay, let me start. I'll go with the academics teams first. So shall I go to your team? Yeah, who wants to? Yeah, please listen, yeah, you have to guess. If you do a better one, I'll give these flowers. We got two. <laughs> yeah. Uh, please listen, yeah. Yep. Is it correct? Yes. Uh, okay, that's a good try. Thank you very much. Uh, I'll go to this one. Who's going to volunteer? Yeah. Yeah, Prakash, yeah. Three, three good ones, yeah. Se Wessler. Yeah. The second one? First one. Ah, you are a wrestler then. Are you? Ah, that's good. <laughs> ah, okay. Well done. I'll go to your one, please. I'm Dr. Hari Krishnan. Uh, uh, can I'm, you in I'm interested in research. I'm into bodybuilding. Uh, I love sports. <laughs> that seems an easy one. Uh, okay, I'll go to this corner. Yeah, please. Uh, can you pass the mic, please? Yeah. I'm Shubhapi. Yeah. I was an NCC cadet. Um, I have a younger sister, and uh, I'm a classical dancer. Yep. Yeah. Any guesses? First one. Second one wrong. Second one wrong. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, I'll go to the group behind. It's going live, so it's your opportunity. <laughs> yeah, please. Yeah. Yeah, please. My name is Arya. Uh, I'm from Kerala. Uh, I'm introducing myself. I'm Arya Shok. Uh, I'm from Kerala. Uh, I'm studying in electronics department. I knew Canada very well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a straightforward one, it seems. Thank you very much. Uh, over to you. Yep. Uh, so the first statement is that uh, I love snakes. The second statement is that uh, I am committed. Third one is. <laughs> I secured top 10 rank in J Mens in my school. Okay. <laughs> Second one. I. Second one. Yeah, you didn't tell who you are and which program. Are you? Uh, I'm Karthik uh, and I'm studying uh, first year MNC. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, okay. Uh, the last group. Uh, no, in the middle one, please. Yeah. You are next there. I am Radhika Dear. I am extensive cadet. Lots of knowledge in cricket. <laughs> I am a kabaddi player. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. Uh, the group behind? 
I, my name is Muad. Uh, I have traveled here through bike. I am a student and I play games daily. Uh, first one. First one. First one, yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, thank you all for taking part as well. I believe now you will start talking during the workshop. So that was my intention. So I'll go through some material and then I'll ask you to engage in uh, group activity and then you will get an opportunity to present here as well, yeah? Whatever you are discussing. So th this is our aim. So explore flipped learning approaches. I'm sure that you may have heard this word before as well as you may have doing it as a practice, but you don't know it is called flipped learning. So the, and thanks for completing the survey as well over the last couple of days. Give me a second, I'll show you some, some of your responses. I think there were a few responses to say that you know about flipped learning and it is working. I think majority said they are aware. I, I'll, I'll load the results later on. So, and blended learning approaches, which we practice during COVID-19 and how your transition works. You know, we are now coming to the post COVID-19. So whether you are taking some of those practices to our current practice or how this transition, transition uh, approach works, as well as discuss subject specific examples. So I'm from cybersecurity, Angesh is from AI and machine learning. So we will discuss some of our uh, exercises back in Cardiff and uh, we want to hear from you what you are doing, what you, what you did. So that's, the, that's why we are calling it uh, shared uh, best practice. Yeah? So that's how we want to uh, go on this session. So this is a graphical illustration, traditional classroom and flipped classroom. So which one are you? Are you still using traditional or are you using flipped approaches? Oh, what happened during COVID-19? Is it a mix of them? I, I'm glad that the students are here today. I didn't expect the students. So this is a good opportunity to learn from uh, you as well. Uh, you don't need to comment on individual practice, but in general, what you would like to uh, see. So traditional classroom, you have a lecture. You go home and do the homework. You try to understand the concepts. Yeah? In fact, in theory, theory, whatever you learned in theory, maybe you try it to apply. But in the flipped learning, it may be you are watching, we are recording a video, which, which we did during COVID-19. Or oh, it doesn't have to be a video. We, you can send a research paper to study, or maybe a survey paper about survey of different techniques and so on. And then you come to the class. This is where the more active learning takes place. So you discuss, maybe it's, let's say, think about a 300 student class. If you have a lecture, you can't give individual attention, isn't it? But in the flipped learning, everyone watches a video, let's say recorded video. When they come to the classroom, you can organize them into workshops, you know, workshop groups, like 20 each. So then you can give individual attention. You can differentiate the learning expectations from students and so on. So that's the flipped learning. I'm not saying this is good, but I'm just presenting two concepts, but we want to hear from you whether it is a good, a good approach or bad approach. And we do both as well. In, uh, before COVID-19, we most of the time we were traditional approach. COVID-19, we in a way, no choice. We went for the flip learning, but it's still at uh, right now we are still keeping some parts of uh, flip learning as well. Uh, same thing, little bit more detail. Before the class, in traditional model, nothing. Of course, you will say that uh, pre-reading, but hardly students go and read. Do you read pre-reading before coming to the lecture? Uh, do you use Blackboard or uh, Moodle? Mo Blackboard? Moodle? V virtual learning environment? V which? Yeah, I think most of the universities have uh, some kind of a, it is, it is called virtual learning environment, VLE. So some people use Moodle and some people use Blackboard. I think the students can implement it. It is open source software. You can have your own uh, Moodle as well if you want. 
and so you can upload some material for as free reading but in the traditional classroom no free reading but in the flipped classroom students can see a video see a paper or see some kind of a case study and then in the during the class of course in the traditional model you have the lecture and after the class the students try to understand what was the lecture is about and how we, they can apply in practice and so on but in the flipped learning during the class because they have done the reading yeah they know the material they may know the theory so you can consolidate that learning in the class and in the sometimes individual basis one to one basis or in a small group setting rather than a, a large scale uh, classroom setting and then after the class what happened you you had the theory you learn a bit more and then you can consolidate a little bit, bit more yeah so this this is these are like general features of uh, these two approaches again i'm not saying one is better but i'm just presenting the facts yeah. and th these are few breakdown so how the material is delivered in class outside of class feedback slow and tailored you know if you have 300 students how you can give individual feedback it's, it's it's not possible isn't it so because there are many students in the classroom but in the flipped approach small group sizes workshop classes you can immediate and effective feedback you can give it to the uh, learners and teacher time you are saving bit of time as well otherwise you have to speak for the whole one hour or two hour because you are giving more learning at home but when you come back you will instruct or oh, it is more tutored rather than lecturing kind of approach so it's teacher is a lecturer and it's more facilitator and tutor uh, kind of thing content mastery slow in traditional and faster in the flipped approach uh, student student involvement relatively low in a, especially in a large uh, lecture theater kind of uh, uh, setting but it may be higher when it comes to flipped learning where you have individual uh, groups comprehension hit or miss due to varying abilities sometimes you don't know whether the student got the concept or not but the, here there's a possibility you can give individual attention and make sure that everyone achieves minimum level of uh, learning outcome yeah, for a module and these are few other details uh, can you everyone see this at the back oh it's too small yeah so before the class so the video i mean think about a video recorded video they can watch it anytime isn't it if they, if they don't get it at the first time they can uh, re-watch it pause it and check it and so there's more opportunities for the students before the class but teachers as well they will have they can reuse the material and uh, even if the teacher is not available on the day it's not a problem because it's still the uh, the, the learning will take place because it is uploaded to the uh, your platform and after the classroom you will do the active learning so when they come to after reading the material when they come to the lecture or the workshop they can do more active reading uh, active learning apply new knowledge ask questions and get immediate answers feedback is immediate better understanding and the teacher can really differentiate it is not one size fit all so you can differentiate your delivery you know in the, your primary secondary school you have different uh, group settings based on your ability it is not the case in the university but still there's a possibility you can uh, differentiate thank you very much better classroom management and of course there will be more interaction interactions with the teachers in a workshop uh, setting like this yeah. so those are the uh, different features do we need the usb or So flip learning now everyone knows about the concept so are you doing this in your practice if, if you are doing it I we can stop the uh, workshop a bit early <laughs> so what do you think uh, students what do you think about that approach compared to the traditional approach do you think any advantage or disadvantage anyone you can speak up we did the icebreaker I thought you will is I had to stop you from talking yeah I, okay uh, let's wait for the activities then I, I believe you will get a chance so now we are moving towards more active learning 
I said you will learn the material at home and you do the active learning when you come to the university or the workshop. Yeah. So what are the features of active learning? Uh, I think there are many research. I'm sure some of you are, some of the lecturers are doing uh, uh, teaching fellowships and that kind of learning about how, how, how learners are uh, uh, studying uh, certain material. So these are the active learning theory. So active learning is an instructional approach in which students active to actively participate in the learning process as opposed to sitting quietly and listening. I believe the last latter part not applied to you. I know you, are, you want to talk uh, more about this concept, but it is more student-centered learning. You own your learning. You are not relying on the lecturer to deliver the material. So you have a re some responsibility in your part as well. So that is uh, active learning. And active learning builds on constructivist learning theory, which poses that people learn by connecting new, new ideas and experiences what they already know. So they are trying to, they are, ex they are exploring new knowledge, but at the same time you are connecting your prior knowledge as well, and your prior experiences, and you are trying to connect the dots basically to understand. I think some of you may know this uh, particular research is very famous for the learning and teaching uh, research. These are some features of active learning happening. Engage in the learning process. Encourage to own and construct knowledge. So you own your learning. You are not saying that that lecturer was not good. I didn't like him. Because you have a part to, part to play. You have a role to play in this kind of uh, learning. Provided with real life connections and experiences, you can connect with the, uh, the, the problem-based learning, project-based learning, or inquiry-based learning. Required to think, think critically, <coughs> creatively, learning with reference to their different learning styles and so many other things. Yeah? So this is the next activity. So you want to think about what kind of things you can do in terms of uh, active learning. So this is the group activity for you. Yeah. So I want you to discuss within your group uh, a scenario where you learn something well. In w so what, what, what kind of things supported that learning. So you can refer to these active learning <coughs> features I mentioned before, but this is in general. You don't need to think about active learning. So just go through the prompts and have a discussion and then we'll share it on a Padlet later on and then we can discuss as a class. Yeah. Did you get what you want to do? Yeah. So I want you to discuss a scenario where you learn something better. It, I think you are doing AI and other things, isn't it? So maybe quantum cryptography, if you are doing cybersecurity. So you want to learn something. Where did it happen? Did it happen during the lecture or did it happen while you are doing a self-study? So that's what, that kind of thing I want to uh, learn from you. So have, a, have this discussion within your groups and then I'll ask one of you to present or put it to the Padlet so we, we all can see your thoughts uh, on this. Yeah. Over to you. So I stop talking now. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, can I ask some of the lecturers to sit with the student groups? Is it okay? Yeah? Uh, can I have your attention, please? Yeah. Can I ask uh, at least one of the lecturers to sit with the students group? Is it okay? I don't know whether it is happening. <laughs> it's comfortable, but uh, yeah, please, yeah, if possible. Yeah. <laughs> At least one lecturer to sit with the students here, yeah, please. Yeah. Yeah, you also can join them. Ah, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, one of you can join them as well. <laughs> I think you are group of four now. <laughs> Uh, one of you can join this group. Uh, yeah, come on.
So think of, think of. And I think every table has a laptop as well. If you want to do a bit of Google search, yeah, that's fine as well. Yeah. to use the laptop yeah so you want to search or something yeah Please. they are working yeah the laptops working yeah? laptops are working yeah yeah, yeah. it's a charger yeah thank you very much yeah. my one is running now Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is there a place here? Or? You don't know the. I'll check the power. Maybe three hours. No, no, that's fine. Yeah, it won't go down now. Did I put it here? No, it's not there. Yeah, yeah it's working. Yeah. Thank you.
So I'll give two, th two to three minutes to upload something here so we can discuss here. Yeah? Doesn't have to be all of you, maybe one example. Yeah. Are you all okay? You found an example? Yeah. Just upload it there. Yeah. Not how technology works. Yeah. <laughs> Type it here, yeah. And different color do any decoration. <laughs> we can leave the mic in the front. Yeah, I can see some of the inputs. I'll ask from one of the group members, but not, not the one who entered, yeah? Someone else, so you can't get away with your discussion. <laughs> yeah. How about your group? Is it in or? No? Yeah? Okay, that's right. Yeah. It's good that we don't need to refresh. <laughs> it's good. And you can modify as well your entry here. Yeah? How many groups we have? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. So three more, and then we'll uh, discuss it. Yeah.
So while others are entering the their discussion, shall we start discussing? Yeah. But you have to pay attention to the uh, other members now. Yeah. Shall I start with you? Yeah. Who entered the entry? Yeah. So I'll ask someone else to discuss. Yeah. <laughs> you want to share it? Yeah. So then, not both of you. Maybe someone else. <laughs> Yeah, who wants to go first? No, I mean, explain what happened. Well, explain the scenario that you had a good active learning experience. Was it happened during a traditional lecture? Was it happened during a workshop? Or so that's the information we need. Not to say that flipped learning is better, but uh, we want to see the environment, the, the support mechanism. Uh, yeah. 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 No, no, you, you can join as well, yeah, if possible, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, please be silent, yeah, and uh, so hello, hello. let's listen to each other. Yeah, uh, if you want to take the example of uh, active participation, uh, that is actually better. Uh, when it is comes to the like group discussion or, or here itself, like when we share something, we'll come to know that what exactly the person is feeling, all those things. So when it is comes to the uh, active learning, so instead of uh, theoretical aspects, we'll get the knowledge in practical terms. Yeah. Okay, take example, uh, I'm, I'm from basically from commerce department. Uh, when we t teach with, uh, interact with the students, take example of group discussion. Instead of telling theory something about group discussion, if I make them to actively participate in the group discussion, they will easily understand how exactly they have to sit in the group discussion, how they have to maintain the eye contact in the group discussion, all those things. So active participation, from there it comes. So you, instead of if I say just only the theory concept, go and go and go and, and they will just listen to that and they will not uh, make it uh, like possible in a practical sense. Okay, so for me, so that is better actually. Yeah. And that is what important is. Yeah. So what, what you're saying is in a way like more practical exposure, isn't practical it? Practical exposure is yeah. uh, important, but theory foundation is needed. Yeah, that's true. Theory foundation is yeah. required, but yeah. practical, if they're practically doing it, yeah. with the active participation, then they will come to know that. Yeah, that's true. And bit of uh, peer support as well. Peer support, working yeah. With the group like other so fellow mode, they will support. If yeah. they make any wrong also, there, there, there will be no one else, yeah. like demotivate them. Yeah, so they true. will get positively, they will be boosted. Yeah. So thank you very thank much you. Uh, for sharing. Yeah. Uh, one more from your group. You had two entries, am I right? Uh, I'll ask one of you to explain. C can I have the mic? One of you? You want to go? Or? Yeah, I'll ask you. <laughs> There's no right or wrong answer, so it's okay. <laughs> Active learning uh, plays an important role, like uh, we if we go on uh, blindly, there will not be any thing which is going to reflect. Mm -hmm. When active learning is there, when uh, students get interacted, th when they openly discuss, we'll come to know the pros and cons, where the thing, where the stress to be given and where the stress should not be given. Like, mm -hmm. if known topic is there, we, if we discuss only known topic, it is useless. Yeah, that's true. When it comes for the lagging thing, then it helps. Another part comes uh, when we, in the field of actively research, when we join, yeah. like the peer-to-peer, -peer, when we were the subordinates, we had our colleagues, yeah. we started discussion. When the active discussion went with the, each other, we had a key idea where, which field we can go and which yeah. is our strength and which is our weakness. Yeah, that was a highlighting during that. Yeah, the active true. learning is a very important thing so it helps for everyone. Yeah, that's true. So you highlighted the social interaction aspect. Yeah, social as interaction, well. everything. Yeah. Because of that, I think uh, today I can be very confident enough in this. Yeah, that's true. Thanks for sharing. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much for this group. Well done. Uh, two entries. Who wants to go next? Volunteers? I'll hand over to you. Yeah. Hello. Actually, as per my perception and our perceptions, 
that uh, active learning is a concept which bring a lot of positive change on a uh, student's uh, study methodology. First of all, that a student should be upgrade based on the today's syllabus, curriculum, whatever it is. It should be upgrade. If you be a far from technology or upgrading, it means you are expired. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have seen now in many uh, countries, so particularly I'm originally from Afghanistan, but I'm currently doing my postdoctoral in uh, Mangalore University. Yeah. But the main thing that we, ha if you compare some countries, so in different country has their different perception. As Sir said, with, uh, active learning today is uh, one of the most important parts of the, for the developing countries. Mm -hmm. If the student definitely they are trying to grow up, definitely should be active, engage, and be upgrades and accessibility of any technology and, and, and educational sources important for them. On other sides, there is another responsibility of the management of the university or education institute. Give uh, independence for the education for the students. Don't be so much create some restriction for the students that they be far away, they should ban the classes, they should not attend the classes, they should not present the, in the presentation, they should not go on the stage. So this thing definitely create some weaknesses for the students. Mm -hmm. If you have a dependency for the, for the students, I'm sure they will be active and they should be upgrade, they should be uh, intelligent in their classes. Thank yeah. you, sir. Okay, thank you very much. I think you mentioned about independence, I think student-centered learning. You should give them the responsibility of their learning, you know. Right now we are trying top bottom approach, you know, so there should be bottom up approach. So they get the responsibility, they own their own, own learning as well. So may I come to your group? To summarize, I'm expecting something good from you because most of you are students, I guess. <laughs> and this is an opportunity for you to convey your messages to your uh, lecturers as well. <laughs> yeah, d don't be shy, you know each other, you did the icebreaker, so. Or till you prepare, so may I go to your group, please? Yeah. Yeah. Sekar, you want to go? Yeah. Uh, the practical oriented learning with the smart. Uh, things like videos or animations. This will give a lot of understanding uh, to the students. Uh -huh. Along with that, uh, theoretical aspects uh, when they are covered for long time, instead of that, practically it is shown uh, quickly within uh, no, no waiting. The things are continuously getting understood or the aspects of those learning will be clearly grasped. <laughs> Likewise, doing some uh, dish instead of uh, saying that for long, along with preparation will give better experience. Yeah. And uh, one more thing uh, is what I observed is uh, when the commitment is less, the people will learn a lot. Mm -hmm. That commitment less means when interest has to be generated. Yeah. When interest is there and commitment is also less. Yeah. People or when commitment is less, people go for uh, uh, some uh, learning and they will stop when they lose yeah. uh, the interest. That's true. Yeah. But uh, academically what happens is they somehow has to go through that paper even though they are interested in or not something. So somehow that interest has to be created and that has to be carried on. Yeah. So do, do you reckon technology can help in there? Like you yeah, said, yeah, yeah, create definitely. a good video definitely. and so on? Definitely. Yeah. Technology, like uh, animations, practical learning, yep. that will definitely help. Okay, that's I good. want some of my students. Yeah, yeah, yes, please, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> we, uh, we are more focusing on like theoretically, but we come to practical, we can be more like understand many things in a small period of time and uh, we may be much interested in about it and like technologies like Vision Pro now 
3D animations, everything. Mm -hmm. Like uh, un unpacking every technology, like what's inside this mic, the circuits. We can visualize everything mm -hmm. using smart glasses. Yeah. And uh, yes. yeah. theoretically, so we can just see in textbooks, but in practical, like mm -hmm. working, uh, more oriented in working, so we can. So you prefer more visualizations than traditional yeah. lecture lectures yeah, and sure. so on. Sure. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Anything interesting apart from the ones we discussed already? From last two groups and the one here? Yeah, over there. Yeah. Any Hello, good afternoon. good afternoon. So according to me, active learning is something like the people who are present in the group, they'll be actively participating. Like each one will be actively participating. Yeah. So uh, I am a student myself, OK? So during exams, sir, uh, like there will be people in the traditional classes, they'll be like, uh, they can't focus. If they want to also, they can't focus on in the, during the traditional classes. So yeah. they'll be finding people who can uh, tell them what the concept is. Yeah. So uh, during this, uh, like in the active learning process, th that is what we do. We discuss about the topics, and we make the other people understand what the topic is. So uh, what we do during our exams is, uh, there'll be person who will be knowing about the concept. Yeah. So he or she will be teaching the other persons, uh, like uh, explaining them in a fun way. So yeah. that that will be under, uh, like understandable. Yeah. So during uh, the writing of the exams, we'll be remembering how what that person said. Yeah. Okay, so that answers will be written uh, during the exams. Yeah. So uh, in that way, active learning is a, a really gr good approach for the students. Yeah. So you mentioned that someone should support the, the material does it has to be a lecturer or be a PI student? Sir, uh, it, it, should be a, it should be a student only. Like, uh, so uh, the student who knows everything, yeah. it may be anything. Like it may be like they said, uh, the visual whatever from the videos, they gain yeah. the knowledge. Yeah. They sit in the traditional classes, they listen to the lectures and yeah. everything. Yeah. And then that the person will be having the much, much of the knowledge of that particular yeah. topic yes. but the other persons who can't focus in the traditional classes yeah. they'll be like they'll be finding those persons who can make them understand in a better way yeah, so true. in that way active learning is a really go good approach for the students yeah that's true thank you very much so i think uh, what she's highlighting is more group activities and peer learning peer yes. support peer to peer support so in your modules courses so how you assess is it the final exam or do you have any uh, formative assessment like you evaluate them halfway through the module. I'm just asking from the lecturers. Do you have Inter the summative assessment? We have internals. OK. You give the percentage of marks as well, yeah? Yeah. So I think, uh, do you give group marks as well? Group projects and so on? Project works. Are they group projects or individual projects? OK. OK. Thank you very much yeah, for sharing. You, yeah. That's a very interesting fact. So they, they I mean, we feel like, if you are getting information from an interesting source, we get to remember the concept, and that's in a way then you can you will get an opportunity to realize the concept and the theory and as well. So shall I pass it to the other two groups, or you want to wait for the next exercise? Yeah. So I'll wait for the next exercise, then you will go first. Yeah, the corner one and this group. Yeah. Uh, okay. So I'll move to the next one. So the flipped classroom. So we discuss about traditional classroom, flipped classroom. So this is part of a blended learning. Can someone tell me what is blended learning? Yep, online, offline? Mixed method. Mixed method, yeah. Can you tell uh, another name for that one? Blended learning? Some people? Yeah, flip learning is part of blended learning. So have you heard asynchronous and synchronous learning? So synchronous learning is a live uh, lecture. So you listen synchronously. Asynchronous means you recorded a video, then you watch uh, asynchronously. It's not a live experience. So. Blended learning, I think this came in a way because of COVID-19. We used distance learning kind of programs before, but uh, inevitably because of the COVID-19 pandemic, we moved to online uh, learning, and this became, uh, uh, I think, we all followed in a way, so all went online. But with, with COVID-19 gone away, now we are trying more face-to-face, -face, but still we are trying to keep some parts of 
online learning in our practice. So, uh, Angesh, can you explain about how we work at the moment? Uh, online studio and... Yeah, I get that. Hi. Can you hear me? So, uh, at the moment, as uh, Shami just said, that we are having a kind of mixture because after COVID, we started realizing that it's worth keeping or retaining the best practices. So what we are doing at the moment, so for every module, which you call as course, I think, yeah? so we have got like studio session where studio is like the, I mean, you will be taught some content as a, as, as a traditional lecture, but at the same time, it would be more interactive. And that studio session is again <coughs> divided into two parts. One is through on-campus mode, as we are doing at the moment, and the other one is uh, via MS Teams, which is a virtual platform. So the reason we are doing that way is because we started realizing, and I can give you an example. Can you raise your hand if you are going through a computing program where you need to do some kind of coding? Can you raise your hand? Any, anyone? No one is doing coding, programming? Yeah. I'm not going to ask any question. I just want to know some stats, <laughs> okay? Okay, excellent. So for, for that kind of modules or courses where you need to do some sort of coding, now imagine the scenario that someone is coming live in front of you and they are using some kind of PowerPoint and after the lecture, everything goes away, right? That's scenario number one. The scenario number two is where uh, the session would start in a, on a virtual platform where someone would come and do the coding in front of you, but obviously on a virtual platform, and that session can also get recorded. Okay? And in the same week, during the next session, the same person will come in front of you in a lecture theater, and then they, they, they can start doing some discussion based on what they did on the other day. Now imagine how good this system could be. Because you've got your time, you've got time, two, three days of time, where you could go and even watch the recording, do the coding yourself, do some mistake, understand what not to do and what to do, and then we, when you come the next day in the same week, you can ask questions, and again, it, it will kind of start a kind of new kind of discussion, right? So that's the approach we are still using within Cardiff Metro University. And on top of that, we also have workshops, which sometimes in Indian, in the South Asian system we call as practical. So in practical, what we do in, in this system that you go and start working on a, on a piece of small project kind of thing, but we call that as a workshop because workshop is where we have at the most 20 students in a group, in a, in a room, and that's more sort of one-to-one -one support. So in a way what we are trying to tell here is that we ended teaching or learning activities is something where you need to make right balance and, to, and then decide what works best for you and what doesn't work best for you. Now the example I've provided here is more relevant to the <coughs> topics which we are teaching back in Cardiff, which is mostly computing driven, where you have to do the coding, you have to do some uh, problem solving in front, uh, using some coding platform. But if situation is different in your classroom, in your you know, uh, university, then perhaps this might not be the best thing. But it's for you to decide what works best for you and what kind of blended learning you think would work for you. Because this is just one example. You can think of many different examples which might work for you. Do you have anything in mind, especially from students, if you think something like this could work and which could be taken as a suggestion? Anyone? Are you full face-to-face -face now, all your programs? Or is there any element online at how, the moment? How is the teaching going during COVID-19? I'm, I'm, I'm sure there was going on online. online, right? But the moment you return to campus, that stopped, right? That's what we could sense, right? So what I'm trying to say here is that you can start thinking and talking to, I mean, I'm specifically referring to the uh, lectures, that you can start thinking whether that approach, when you, what you did during COVID-19, can still be brought back partially, not fully.
we obviously we don't want to use this on campus facilities and face to face interaction but can we still use some of those techniques if yes then how because one size fits all it doesn't work yeah. everywhere right so the one approach i gave or i discussed works for us for cardiff met university but that might not be suitable for you so it's for you to decide and see if that fits in your case or not yeah so how is your management thinking so coming to the on campus is better or keep them at a uh, home and do a bit of self study is better do you have any attendance system where you are supposed to come to attend uh, classroom every day and okay you have attendance system yeah so which means it's cons you are expected to be on campus okay so can one of the lecturers explain that how it works is it full face to face attendance at the moment or full okay so was there any transition period from covid 19 to full face to face was there any period that you did half face to face half online just want to know how did you transition happen like this and all start coming to the university to some extent okay. so can you give me an example how it did it work when it's come to 50 50 let's say so uh, students were at home so we had to go there and we had to take the class so during the peak hours we were at home yep. they were also at home so yep. we had uh, online mode yep. and then uh, there were few students who couldn't still make it later on yep. we had hybrid mode of teaching okay so, so that uh, that uh, it was gradual yeah so it was not a sudden from sudden uh, form, yeah, yeah from online to offline or to face to face interaction okay. that's great yeah we Thanks. had f still few entries those were also attending uh, online online okay yeah. but now it is and i think in most of the Full campus face to face yeah i think uh, as angesh said we are still keeping like 20 to 80% 20% online and 80% face to face but at uh, the end of the day uh, for certain assignments and some things where immediate uh, response has been required yeah. we call for uh, online meetings online meetings yes. okay. okay for a short duration of time okay thank you for sharing yeah. can i ask from couple of students what you want come to the university or you want a small portion of study don't think this as a recommendation i am just asking uh, this just <laughs> one 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 comment uh, when we are kind of asking this question what you think would work best for you don't think in a different perspective that it's better to stay at home just because you can go and watch movie or wa watch football match no, don't think in that perspective think in terms of the outcome the learning outcome what you think would work best switching again back to 100% on again which i doubt this doesn't or having some kind of ratio yeah. as we are doing or the way it works or the way you are doing right now yeah, sometimes you would have felt that i could have done this at home rather than coming yeah. to the university it depends on the demographics as well you know if all the students are close to the university of course you can travel isn't it but if you take like uh, our university students sometimes travel from 2 3 hours away you know so sometimes they feel like they could have done that thing at home rather than coming to the university travel into the university so i want to listen from one or two students so what do you reckon do you think that there are portions of your study that you could still do online or you prefer face to face you can meet the lecturers you can meet the tutors and it is a very good experience for you just want to listen from couple of students it's I, I, I can I, I can help you in thinking towards that direction. I, I can give you another example, and this example is not about teaching. This is about how we work as as a member of academic staff or a faculty member, if you might want to term that way. That we are doing some management stuff as well. Both me and my colleague, we are, we are talking here, and at the same time, we are active researcher as well, right? Now. personally i'm not sure about my colleague but he can comment more on that but personally when i i need to read some papers i need to write a manuscript i need to think uh you know within myself and if i'm trying to work on something which requires peaceful ambience i would rather prefer working at home on that day and this is how i schedule my diary i'm not on campus 5 days in a week rather i i would be in campus for first three days or maybe alternate days where i need to go and chair some meeting speak to my uh, someone in my team i mean the management stuff the administrative stuff and the stuff which requires me to be on campus but when i need to do some critical thinking kind of uh, 
thing. I, I would rather prefer to stay at home and do it at my home because that gives, that kind of helps me to have more productivity. Okay, so that's a different example obviously, but the reason I give this example is because that would perhaps help you to understand what, I'm, what we are trying to ask. Okay, so in terms of the content delivery, in terms of teaching, one is obviously the business as usual which we are doing, but do you think that the other way, the blended approach would perhaps help you to grasp the information at your own pace, yes or no? And if yes, then what ratio you think would be appropriate? Yeah. So we were talking a lot now, so you have to answer. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not just we who have to talk, you guys also. That was not our intention yes. when we started. <laughs> And, and don't worry, no one is going to judge you. So if yeah, you it's that, not judging, it's sharing, it's sharing best that, practices. Yeah. yeah, if you think that member of staff are also present in this room and the people are going to judge you, please don't think that way. No one is going to judge you based on what you're answering. It's, it's like collection of data. We are trying to gather to hear people from different part of the world what works best for them. You guys, do you want to speak? I, I mean, I've been observing this table. You guys are very quiet. I, th I think he's waiting for the mic. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so the mic. My name is Deepak. Uh, yeah, the thing is, um, we can't uh, rely 100% on work from home learning uh, because during COVID time, the most important uh, problem that occurred to many students was uh, they, when they were from the remote videos, they would not have a proper internet connection to attend the classes or anything. So at that time, the university in which I was learning, uh, they inculcated that uh, hybrid learning, wherein the teachers would pre-record the videos and then they would yeah. share their drive link. Yeah. So that helped. Uh, and currently, it's 100% full time. And uh, I don't think it should be that 80% and 20% also. Uh, the students should be in, come to campus, and but more of the teaching methodology should be a flipped learning method. Mm -hmm. So uh, learning in a home, uh, for me personally, I don't think that's the best idea. It should be either in mm -hmm. campus or in library or practical classroom. It should be somewhere outside. Uh, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <coughs> Thanks for sharing. Thank you so much. Any other students? Do you want to say something? Do you offer your coffee or something? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they were having discussions while they were talking. Yeah. Seems they have some ideas. According to me, offline classes are best because mm. uh, we can't uh, concentrate every time in our home. If you are in a class, it is mandatory to listen and yep. to respond to the lectures. Yep. And in sometimes we have it only one or two classes, then we can attend it online also because yep. uh, rest of the times we can do some other works or we can learn something. Yep. Otherwise. Blended is also good for me. Yeah. So at the moment, are you learning blended approach or full face to face? 80 to 80 percent. Okay. What What is your program? Which Which, which, what which program? MSc or yeah. MSc Cyber Security. Okay. Thank you. So I think in uh, UK, just to share our experience, so we are struggling to bring students to the campus because they was they are so they were so used to COVID-19. So we are inviting them, and but still they are not coming because some are mature students. You know, UK student population is different because by 18 sometimes they are married, uh, they are working full time, and uh, they prefer to do the work and studies at the same time, and they prefer doing bit up online and come bit up for the uh, classroom. It is a context, isn't it? There's no right or wrong thing. It 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 is depending on the environment you are in and what kind of expectations they have. So. That's also because we do not penalize students for not attending the classes. There is no attendance, so there is no such marks allocated for attendance. And according to the standard UK system, no university can penalize a student for not being on class. So it's sort of taking the responsibility on your own. If 
you are coming to the campus, if you're attending the session, it's good for you. If not, we don't care. It becomes that way, right? So that's the kind of ownership you need to have. Instead of thinking that we have to be on campus just because some attendance is going to be marked, present sir, present ma'am, no, it's, it shouldn't be that way. So that, I think, is a yeah. central message, right? And if you start thinking in that direction, uh, that you have to be on campus just because you want to get something out of that instead of that paperwork, then probably you, you, you would start reflecting on what works best for you. What kind, if blended, then what kind of blended works best for you? Yeah, that's yeah. true. Yeah. Sometimes we are trying to give them refreshment and everything, but still they don't come. Uh, they come, of course, for the certain part, but it's very difficult to get 100% back because it's still the COVID-19 effect is there and uh, they don't tend to come full time on campus at the moment. So that is just a situation. You don't need to follow it, but we are just sharing uh, what is happening over there. So uh, thanks for uh, engaging in the discussion. So we don't need to do any activity. Uh, any familiarity with these tools during COVID-19? Which one is the most popular? I, I remember some of you are pronouncing Kahoot. Yeah, Mentimeter. Yeah, we are using Padlet. The one you use is Padlet. And uh, MyRoboard, have you used MyRoboard before? It is again a discussion board. Everyone can engage and live you can see people are writing, deleting and moving. Uh, yeah. Panopto, I think we had Panopto, isn't it? Yeah, we so do have. So this is a video recording software. You know, it's like Teams, you can record videos like Zoom. Uh, you can record your own video lecture material and you can populate to the class. Uh, my robot, of course, and few other uh, charts as well. Anything else you don't find it here that you use during COVID-19? Or lecturers mainly because you are the one kind of creating the content? Anything? Zoom? Did you use Zoom or Teams during COVID-19? Zoom? Yep. For us, it was Teams. And uh, a, a, a few of these tools are free of cost. You don't have to pay a single yeah. penny. It's, I think my robot is also free of cost. Yeah, it's free most of the So time. you don't have to pay any single penny to work and to start using that. So you can give it a go, maybe from tomorrow. Yeah. Because probably tomorrow, I, when I'll be presenting my part, I'll request you to use my robot. Yeah. And one of you mentioned that better visualizations, you know, if you're using the right tool, even learning from home would be a better experience, you know, but if it is a very bad video created by the lecturer without any animation or any, any kind of interesting things, you may be less engaged with the content. So th that's what you mentioned. So if you're using the right tool and right, uh, right tool for the right lesson, I think there will be more engagement in terms of the students as well. Yeah, so sorry, we are not doing this one as well. So now I will move on to the, so you know flip learning is part of blended learning. Now I will move back into the flip learning. What are the, uh, the pros and cons? What are the good things about it? What are the bad things about it? And then we'll talk about few examples of from our uh, practice as well. So what are the advantages of flip learning? Doing bit at home and coming to the lecture and do a bit more engaging, more active learning student-centered model yeah you own your own learning you are not relying on your lecture or anything like that efficient use of time so you can watch the video anytime you want at home of course you should have the technology and other things suitable for large student uh, classes student engagement and motivation of course you interact with the workshop group and you will learn from peers some of you mentioned you are happy to learn from your colleagues that will you will remember in the exams you can practice project-based learning, problem-based learning, uh, research-informed teaching, which we will cover in the next workshop as well tomorrow, which is part of active learning, one-to-one uh, -one interaction. And these are the disadvantages. Yeah. Don't flop when you flip. Yeah. Don't try to reinvent the wheel. Yeah. If it is working face-to-face, -face, go for it. Traditional class, no problem. But uh, if there's a, it's, Always better to try something new and see whether students get what they want. Yeah? Organizational challenges for implementing. So if you ask your administrators to, let's go for flip learning, I mean, they will say, no, we don't have money to do this and that. So there will be, of course, challenges from the, uh, for, from your administrators. Students from diverse backgrounds, yeah? So how you are going to cater uh, different needs and different, uh, different uh, uh, learning requirements of the students. Logistic issues. 
if someone doesn't have a laptop or any good device to connect at home and they, if they don't have broadband, again, it's a problem, isn't it? You can't push the students to uh, watch videos from home. And it is the same for the lecturers. Some are not tech savvy, you know. Of course, you can record the video, but if you are asked to do an animation for your lecture, some will struggle, isn't it? If you are a lecturer from computer science, of course, you will manage. But if you ask from someone else, they will struggle. So you should provide the required training if you want to have this kind of uh, uh, learning approach. Technology support for both lecturers and students and logistics. Uh, if you want to support active learning, I think this is a good classroom for engagement and all, of course, AC and everything. So you need to have that kind of facilities to enable active learning as well. You can't ask for a lecture room kind of setup to do interactive work, active learning. So it should be a right space. So there should be investment from the university as well. Educators may be relegated to guide on the side. So sometimes lecturers would feel that I am losing my job because everything is online and they are learning by themselves. The students own their own learning. So I'll be like a side support, not the main person in the room, you know. So that would be, the, the, you will feel like that. It may, I'm not sure whether it is the case. And the other thing is the learning should lead by the pedagogy the research into learning and teaching, not by the technology. So this kind of approach, flip learning, active learning, it, sometimes you feel like you should know the technology to do it. Yeah. So it can be a drawback, but uh, our learning should be uh, led by the pedagogy around our practice. Yeah. So th these are the disadvantages of flip learning. So I, I will tell a couple of examples and I'll pass it to Angesha as well. Then I'll come back to your examples of uh, different approaches. You may have tried without you knowing it is flip learning during COVID-19 or even now. So this is the first one is uh, this one I did in a MSc module, information security. Uh, have you heard about Twitter hack? Someone hacked Twitter a few years back, COVID-19. Someone uh, uh, managed to get hold to the administrative account of the Twitter and they changed the tweets of few important people and they asked to pay some money and they uh, they steal about hundred thousand uh, dollars and this was one of the uh, tweet from Bill Gates it's not from Bill Gates he's saying that if you donate thousand dollars I will donate thousand to this charity and so many people were caught in this act so I asked them to investigate what is happening what is the vulnerability, security, this is all at home, homework, and what are the solutions? So how you can avoid such attacks taking place in social media platforms? So I uploaded the form, which is the my robot, case study one. So this is all at home, home before coming to the lecture. Yeah? Sorry, give me a second. Hope you can see this code. Can you see the questions? Yes, we can see that. Yeah, I'll move as well. So what happened in the Twitter attack? What are the vulnerabilities exposed by the attack? So you, have, you will learn about vulnerabilities. You know about the attack, cost of the breach. If there's no cost associated with it, why you are worrying about hacking? So students will learn about cost as well. And then the solution. So these are all student inputs. I used to give them marks as well, <laughs> one or two marks if they complete this task before coming to the lecture. So if you click on it, their content, so I think they are grouped at the moment. There were some couple of good ones. So I think this is an Indian student as well who was doing a very good student, uh, who was doing MSc. So he will explain about each step, what happened, how the attack took place, how they get told the admin portal, and so on and I know by name that he did this activity as well before coming to the lecture. So since they have explored this scenario then it's easy for me when they come to the lecture explain about vulnerability, uh, different information assets and the attacks and so on. So this is a, just a one example. I think this class has we had about 300 MSc students so I can't do it, but of course I need some support from tutors to go through each of these responses and make sure that they address all these criteria and give a small percentage of mark for uh, that module as well. So this is just uh, one example and this is 
second example about best practices. Again, this is a Miro board. I don't know whether this is clear to you. Uh, have you heard about ISO 27001, those who are doing cybersecurity? Yeah? It's an information security standard, like 9001, management quality standard, so information security standard. So I'm asking about what are information security standards. So whenever they see this one, they will go and learn about it, yeah? Info what is information security standard? Cyber essential scheme, this is a UK scheme. What is PDCA? Plan, is it, can someone tell me PDCA life cycle? Plan to check, adjust the life cycle of uh, management standards. And this NIST, how many information security control categories in 27,001? So they will answer to all these questions before they come to the lecture. Then my life is easy. They already know about some of the aspects. And I make sure that all the students have completed something and you can see they have put their student number. So I know that they have completed the task as well. So they do the, this work at home. So when they come to the class, I can do more practical approach to the, uh, establish these important knowledge areas in this particular uh, subject. So this is another example of flip learning in, uh, in uh, cyber security. Uh, I'll hand over to Angesh to discuss uh, another AI-related case study as well. Thanks, thanks, Chami, for that. Uh, I don't have hands in my robot, like, like Chami showed you. It's just because, obviously, my robot was used for this case study as well, but the reason I'm not able to share is because there was, that's comparatively massive, because the response was, was, was not in just one sticky note, so I would rather summarize the finding and I'll, when I'll be giving the example, I'll rather use these bullet points instead of showing you the micro board. But before I go there, let me explain to you the situation, what kind of situation I'm going to talk about. Have you heard about geocoding? I'm not asking about coding, I'm asking about geocoding. Have you heard about that? No. So geocoding is a process by which you can find the location from a given name. So for instance, we are in Mangalore, right? So Mangalore has got the latitude and the longitude. We all know that. What's the latitude and longitude of Mangalore? <laughs> you know that? It's fine. So the process is to find the, to, to, to find the location, the latitude and the longitude is known as geocoding, but you, you don't do it just by going to the Google and finding as, a, as and when required. So there is a dedicated process in geospatial data analysis where you may have 1,000 rows of data having name of location as you find, for instance, on Facebook, on Twitter. If you go and check someone's Twitter, you may find the tweet and the location as well from where the tweet did originate. Now, to, to do the geocoding, you can run a script, a Python script, or any code that you want, and that will re return the geocoding for all the rows of data you have got. That, in short, is known as geocoding, okay? The reason I have to explain this is because if I don't you know, tell that, then there, you won't perhaps be able to understand and to correlate with what I'm saying here. So this module is a geospatial data analysis module where the task was to storify the tweets of 2016 U.S. presidential election. If you know, 2016 U.S. presidential election was some of the most talked topic because of some certain reason. I'm not taking any political side here. That's not my job to do. But as you might be knowing that uh, Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton, I think, not Joe Biden. I think here I have done a mistake by writing Joe Biden. It should be uh, Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump. They were contesting 2016 presidential election, and it's often said that big data analytics was used massively to favor one of the candidates. Again, I'm not, I won't give them any names, this will be on the table. Right? To, so what happened that, as people say that big data analytics influenced the outcome of the election, but how exactly that might have happened? Do you have any guess? 
Where do you get those data which might influence the decision of an election or the behavior of a potential voter? Any idea? Social media. Twitter, for instance, right? Now, in 2024, if you want to go and retrieve 1,000 tweets on certain topic, it won't be easy because of new regulations which has been, Im which has been imposed by the new founder of Twitter. Again, I'm not giving any, any name. But in 2016, 17, it was not, not that difficult. You could actually go and access tweets pertaining to any topic or you want to do that. Now, once you get the tweet, what it means is that you are getting the data which, in a way, contains the sentiment of the voter where they are going to vote. Do you understand what I'm saying? So now, let's say that we, uh, 30 days is, uh, before 30 days of the election, if the campaign team starts digging out those tweets, they can actually find the information, they can actually find the sentiment, the ongoing sentiment. Now, based on that ongoing sentiment, if they think that the candidate for whom they are campaigning or whom they are working is not doing well, then they can customize the campaign process in a way, and that might have an impact on the outcome of the election. So that's how it actually works. Now, this scenario is something similar to that, where I asked my student to retrieve like 1,000 tweets from the topic, hashtag, U.S. presidential election 2016. So once you do that, you'll get the required number of tweets. It would be kind of random data, random 1,000 tweets. Now the job was to storyify the sentiment associated with that tweet. What does the storyify mean? Any idea? Story. Story, you know, story, right? Story is like telling something what happened. Everyone has heard some sort of story when we were kids. So when, once you tell something in a story form, it's easier to understand. So the task was to understand first, first of all, to do the geocoding, to first go and see which location the tweet originated. If someone is tweeting against presidential, US president, presidential candidate sitting in Mumbai, do you really think that's going to make any difference? People sitting in Mangalore, Mumbai, can also have some opinion about US election, but is that really going to impact any, anyone? Yes or no? No, because people may have opinion, but it doesn't mean that every opinion matters. If you're not voting, it doesn't matter what you think. So likewise, the first task was to do the geocoding, and after geocoding, go and do the sentiment analysis, and then story for. Now, once we are talking about storification, it's a very subjective thing. It's, it's not something very objective, and there is no right, right answer. There is no yes or no kind of thing. It's not a binary thing. Everyone may interpret or process the given information in their own way, and hence the storification of person A would be different from person B. It's a human thing. It's a very subjective thing. Now, imagine doing this kind of exercise in a traditional mode where I give this scenario like I am explaining to you and if I come up with some storification, what will happen? That will be my perspective. My perspective doesn't mean the best perspective. I'm not the best known expert in this field. On the other hand, it should be someone individually, I mean, depending on who is doing the storification, it will vary. So to teach this kind of example and to ask uh, and, and while asking students to do this kind of example, the best pedagogical technique which was practiced was something called <coughs> again you have been hearing hearing this term for the past two hours. <laughs> That's what we did, my team did, my teaching team did. We provided the scenario, we asked them to come up with the answer and to present the finding on the next day. But how exactly is this flipped learning? Because it, this, is, it, this sounds more like an assignment where I'm asking you to do something and then I'm asking you to present something on the next day. It becomes flipped learning in a way that they were expected to present their finding using my robot 
and you, you have seen my robot, how does it look? So they all had, they all posted the, the storification which they came up with on the Miro board and as that was anonymous, nobody could actually see who is doing, who is saying what. And on the very next day when we turned up for the actual face-to-face -face session, we used that chart, Miro board, chart, canvas, whatever you might term, to, to drive the discussion and to show how once someone's perspective might be different from someone else. But it doesn't mean that if you are saying something different based on the same data, you are wrong. It's just another way of thinking. It's just another way of analyzing the data. So instead of this traditional approach, flipped learning was used in this case, and that turned out to be a decisive, I mean, it, I mean, in terms of students' feedback, everyone was saying that this, this seems to be a better approach, especially for this kind of example. And some students used graphical storifying tool, whereas some focused on textual style. Again, the style might differ. So if I come up with my storification, my way of telling the story, I would rather come up with a textual representation, whereas if I remember, someone said that they would like a graphical way of presentation, isn't it? Someone might prefer to do some story map kind of thing, which is also okay. And then that resulted into signposting to the open source tools. And then there was some discussion around the challenges and how best we can use those open source tools to do this storification. Because if you go and try to come up with some, abst uh, some graphical abstract, you'll again find multiple tools I'm not saying that it's, you have to use just one of them. It depends what suits you, what suits your requirement. So hence, flipped learning in a way kind of opened options for the students where they could use what they wanted to use while solving the same task, right? That's the case study, that's the example. Do you have any question or anything which you think you might have done differently if you were in my classroom on the day? Who knows, maybe someday you would be. Any idea, anything which you think might have been done differently or in a better way? Any suggestions, any comments? So I think I have explained everything. I don't need to go through these bullet points. I have explained the benefits as well. I have explained the challenges as well. Uh, and if there are no other further questions, I'll hand over again back to my colleague who, who, who can wrap up the discussion, maybe. Yeah, okay. Thanks, Sanjay. I think we are seven minutes away. Seems you feel like a traditional lecture now, yeah? You feel tired or sleepy? <laughs> Uh, so I think we can wrap it up on uh, time as well, Angesh. So I have a last activity, but uh, I'm not going to ask each group. So maybe one of the lecturers can share that uh, one of the approaches you use as a flip learning without you knowing or without you knew that this is the approach. Can someone explain that you gave some work to do at home and then you consolidate that idea during the lecture time? So. It doesn't matter whether it's called flipped learning or traditional, but whether you have done that in, in one of your class activities. I'll, I'm looking at the lecturers here. Uh, yep, Prakash or Sekar, any examples? Uh, I have done uh, through pre-reading. So I, gave, I tell them the topics that I'm going to cover in the next session. And uh, not all of them, but uh, some of them, those who are having that uh, inquisitive to know. Yeah. So they have uh, this pre-reading and they come. Yeah, okay, good. So is there a mechanism to check that whether they have read the document before they come in or? Uh, it is through the understanding, through the level of understanding. Okay. And they are grasping and interaction in the class the next day. Okay, that's fine. Thanks for sharing. Anyone else from economics from your side? Commerce, yeah? Yes, yes. 
Ja, ja, ja. Uh, from commerce? <laughs> Hello. Uh, the thing is like uh, whenever the tough topics or concepts, yeah. so that time I used to follow like these methods. Like mm -hmm. I'll tell the students to come with the well, well in advance to prepare yeah. Yeah. for the same topic yeah. so that they will understand in a better way. Yeah. If it is a simple topic, they will understand whenever we are ex explaining in the classroom. Yeah. But if it is a tough, tough concept or new concept, yeah. So if they come with the preparation, that will be very helpful for us also. Yeah, like whenever true. we add some examples, they'll understand in a better way. Yeah, that's true. And with the recorded class, all those things uh, during the COVID, I used to add assignments in between my videos. Ah, right. Okay. So that I'll understand whether they're watching the videos to the full extent or not. Yeah, if they true. complete the assignment, then it means that they're they have to going through the entire video. Okay. Or else they, if they're skipping, then I'll come to know that. Those, those who are not completing the task, it is, I'm getting to know that, yeah. Yeah, they are not uh, yeah. so into that entire uh, video. Yeah, two, two very good, very good examples. That uh, if if the topic is complex, complex, and it is better to get them ready from home, you know, before they come to the lecture. Then at least they have some pre-reading, -re as you mentioned, and then you can go through it. And uh, the video as well, from our side as well, we use Teams video recording, and we can check how how much how many minutes they have watched the video. So in a way, we know that their engagement with the videos as well. So we have some insights into whether students are watching the videos we recorded or not. But we are doing this for your own benefit. But if you are not watching the video, then again, it's a problem as well, isn't it? We are not achieving our, uh, our objective uh, in, uh, in that case. Yeah. So we are coming to the last part, a couple, couple more minutes. So summary. So it may be flipped classroom. You may not use the word, but maybe a good approach. You don't need to follow it, but uh, you can explore. And in terms of students as well, you can see where the real benefit is, whether listening to a lecture and go do the homework, or you do a bit of work at home and come and talk to your lecturers and tutors and to improve your understanding much better. So that's, uh, that's what we went through the whole uh, lecture. And of course, there will be opportunities and challenges as well. So we are not going back to the COVID-19 era, but we are, we are trying to keep some of those aspects for the benefits of learning. Uh, enabling active learning for the students so they can understand things better. They can interact with the people like in a group setting like that. So that was the, the main aim of uh, flip learning and that's what we uh, both of us try to explain. So tomorrow we are going to do two more workshops. One, one is on uh, research informed teaching. So how uh, we can bring our own research, staff research into teaching. And that's one session. And the afternoon, we are going to talk about usage of AI in learning and teaching. Not about ChatGPT, but how we can make use of AI in uh, learning and teaching as well. So thank you very much for taking part. And uh, thank you all for supporting the session as well. Thank you. Thank you. The battery lasted.